think we are ready to talk about we are ready to talk about growing better better taking care better care of our planet to grow better produce to create better people we're talking about improving your nutritional health while giving some great gardening tips for you growers out there or you do who are thinking about growing no matter what type of plant you're growing we have an expert agriculturalist in Thelonious cook he's going to be talking about spring planting and what you can do to get the ground ready and to have pesticide free herbicide free fertilizer free all crops and to make sure that your family stays nice and healthy all today but we got to start with a five minute story that wait a minute not... i like all this free 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 so what else is free today that does not feature yours truly <laughs> it's going to be a documentary you get access to a free documentary all if you check the the links in our description Thelonious cook the man of the hour his work has become so renowned that he actually had an international documentary crew come to his farm, Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest. So let's just get it in, y'all. Here's the thing. For people that grow, Danique Anthony, I know you're from Jamaica. Things just grow naturally, Janique, right? the video editing freak is in the building. Absolutely. But Triple Threat Fire... Documentaries up your alley, probably, Danique. Yeah, exactly. And Triple Threat Firearms and Defense... You are going to love this because you do a lot of your own growing. Uh, share with Love TV, Nigerian. Oh, Akaro, good morning to you. Uh, G Mama Grows, the OG. She was first in the chat, y'all. She's going to love this because she knows everything about growing. She probably should have been in the documentary along with Veggie Veggie because, I mean, look at the name and the mm -hmm. icon, right? So let's get into it because David Hunt eats vegetables but black girls getting their shift together is in here to learn more as well because she's all things mental health. So this, this is going to help us out, y'all. It's going to help us. Thank you, black girls, getting their shift together for putting in hashtag the home team. If y'all are ready for the five-minute story time, it's a different style today. We're excited about it. Then uh, just sit back because, look, G. Albert is in here uh, saying, and this is a public service announcement, hashtag the home team. While you watch the doc documentary, put in hashtag the home team and maybe you'll be able to grow like Rambo green hands. Rambo, this is for you, man. He's, I know you're an expert farmer and grower over there in the UK. Brah! Jamaican, my brother. This guy is an expert cover cropper, companion cropper. Companion so cropper, cover cropper, composter. He does it all. And he does, he has a, now he doesn't just What if you're garden. just smoking like what you grow? TWP popcorn. Hey, 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 he he grows hemp too. Ah, so he does hempcrete. He grow and he's building buildings out of hempcrete. So guys, you got a lot of value coming your way today, and it's all for free. On Thank the you. Free on the frizzy free. And Ve Veggie Veggie says it's free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank there you, you so Thank much, you, Veggie, Veggie Veggie. You know what? That's enough to get us right into this five minute story time. All right. So again, Delonius Cook, master agriculturalist been to Africa and many countries on the continent of Africa and brought back a lot of growing techniques that he's using right here today. They talk about that in this documentary. And this brother has do, is definitely doing his something right because he's got partnerships with the University of Maryland on the Eastern Shore. He's got partnerships with getting international film crews coming to him to actually do documentaries on his growing techniques. So sit back, as Terrell Owens used to say when he played for the Cowboys, get your popcorn ready. And yes. watch this five minute story. Now, you know, I will say that this is at five, 1.5 1. 1. 5 speed. Y'all know I like to watch things fast. So listen closely. Don't worry, you'll be able to follow. Here we go with the five minute story time. I personally believe that everybody should have the right to feed themselves. We really uh, need access to land, you know, to really feed ourselves and really feed our communities. This is just a part of, you know, our progression sort of on that road to freedom, ultimately. Because farming is also about land justice. The name of my farm is Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest. One of the main differences in uh, large scale, you know, conventional farming and the farming that I do, for one, I'm much smaller uh, in size. And being smaller in size, I can be uh, more hands on and more intensive in my practices. So I have okra here, um, that's cantaloupe, um, squash there, cucumbers, um, 
you know, watermelon on this side. So I'm growing a, you know, not just one crop, but a diverse mix of crops. And some of those crops are beneficial to each other. You can plant corn, beans, you know, and squash because they just have this mutual, you know, uh, relationship with each other. Thelonious Cook's farm in Virginia uses only non-toxic methods to grow food, avoiding all fertilizers and pesticides. Doing like regenerative type practices um, also allow you to um, work yourself out of a job because the soil is starting to approve. You know, if I could show you the, the type of weeds I had in the beginning and how hard that soil was, it was hard to really, you know, uh, pull those roots up. There's literally no uh, life, you know, in the soil, giving it, you know, nutrients. Eventually, your plants, you know, start to respond and then you start to get your better tasting food. Thelonious gets inspiration from his time in Africa doing development. The best fruit I've ever had in my life was from Uganda. The fruit in, in Uganda was so amazing. I mean, just the, the natural environment there is a different color green. It's more vivid. It's like you're seeing HD TV versus an old TV with the big back and everything like that. It's incomparable. And then you have thousands of years of regenerative practices as well. When you monocrop um, and grow just one crop year after year, then you're exhausting the, the soil of those same nutrients year after year. And we've been doing that here in America since the 1600s. All right, y'all, that's all, right. all we can give you. That is it. That is all because- The Cook is a bad man. <laughs> yes, he is bad, y'all. And, and let me tell y'all just how bad y'all know our guest today, um, we we are heavily involved with him, right? We love Thelonious, and it's a matter of us he, having been involved. So I'm just going to play the B-roll while we talk. He taught me how to like my okra raw. You know what, y'all? We are in this documentary. Woo! Just so you know, that is Corey standing up. Those are That's me and our daughters. We were there helping with this particular event. So, you know, we just had to show y'all just a little snippet of uh, us being there. So Six Bows is back. The amazing m &G, We're happy to have you all here. And well, as, hashtag the home team. Hashtag the home team because, uh, oh, I think I just saw some hemp, Corey. I saw a five-pointed plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, we were there making hempcrete. There we are, our daughters, us, and we help to facilitate part of this. And of course, we're going to be talking about this later today because the Sheep Festival. The Sheep Festival, the San, it's for the fellas too, guys. San Kofa <laughs> Healing Experience Festival. And it's going to be happening right there at the mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest Farm. Now, Thelonious is very modest. In his video, in the video, he said, I have a small farm. And this guy's got land galore with crops galore. Y'all see it in the video. Yeah, you see it. And so this, so we're gonna be there as part of the festival, and we're gonna be getting helping him to get the ground ready for the spring planting season. And that's what Thelonious is here to talk about. This so we're gonna bring Thelonious on in. All right, just a moment. Let me just stop this video so that way we're all because that's you pouring libation. I'm gonna stop the video so that way we are a full screen, and when we bring Thelonious in. He is full screen as well. Y'all, that video is in the description. So, Corey, uh, Veggie Veggie is saying, Captain Okra saves the day. Yeah. And Black girls getting their shift together did start a container garden during the pandemic. G. Hey, and you're here right on time because uh, Thelonious is going to give you some tips on how to make your garden grow. Yes. Yeah, so, G. Albert, this is absolutely beautiful and educational. Yes, the video link is in the description. Corey, how do we get him in here because six bows is back it's intrigued her and her six daughters she's like awesome so go ahead corey so you want me to do the fancy introduction no then? you can just bring them in oh, for right now we'll do a fancy introduction later because uh that mary jane caught rambo's eye <laughs> so let's get them in <laughs> all right we're gonna bring in agriculturalist extraordinaire thelonious cook into the building welcome welcome good morning welcome good morning <laughs> all right Thank you guys for that warm introduction <clears throat> <laughs> Thelonious, man, like I said, we've been working with you for quite some time. We've been part of your CSA. We've been, we've done volunteer work on y'all girls and have done volunteer work at your farm. And we've we got videos on our channel about all that stuff, but we want to talk about. We'll be talking about how today you're getting ready for spring planting. And part of that 
is being is going to be part of the Sankofa healing experience. How does the spring planting tie into the healing experience where we're reaching back? Sankofa is a Ghanaian word that means look back and to look back and fetch it or reach back and fetch it. Grab the grab your history and your heritage and go forward to the future with that. Valerie Singleton knows something about that. She's put in there hashtag the home team. Good morning. She's saying happy Thursday. So tell us. So how does the Sankofa, how does, how does the Sankofa experience of spring planting bring about the healing experience that that's going to be part of that festival that we're going to be part of on April 20, April the 15th. April 14th to 15th. the 16th is the full event. You tell us more. Yeah, so the spring season has always been this uh, season of emergence. You know, you're coming out of the winter time. You know, represents you know uh, this this new season of fertility. You know, so it's a, it's a good time you know for us to like set new intentions. And it's always uh, historically been an opportunity for us to gather. You know, as extended family. You know, share stories. You know, and then actually plant the first uh, seeds of the of the season into the ground. Nice. nice. You know what? Uh, Black girls getting their shift together. She says eating off the land is magic, and so for that particular festival, um, will we get to eat? Like I know we it's it's early in the planting season. It'll be April fourteenth through the sixteenth, and your main event the fifteenth. That uh, that aspect of the festival where we honor the land and everything. Do we eat anything at that point off the land or is it, you know, we just getting the starts together? <laughs> well, we will be getting the starts together, um, but I will uh, make it a point to incorporate some of the, the crops that have overwintered. Um, like I still have some collards and kale, you know, out there. So I'll, I'll make sure that that gets into the menu. Okay. Oh, nice. Because you know what? The amazing MNG, well, Six Bows and back is back. She has six daughters. I've seen her do her grocery hauls, and she's she, along with a lot of people today, the amazing MNG, she has a an abundance of food at her at her fingertips. She's in Jamaica. A lot of food grows on trees, but a lot of us, like Goody's Homestead, they're growing their own food, but a lot of us are at the grocery store like, dang, I can only get so much. And Thelonious, you know you've right. been growing for quite some time. You've been not just working with international film crews. You've also been working with the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, and you, you're you getting ready to launch some research because from what you were saying before is that harvesting fruits and vegetables is kind of like getting a new car. <laughs> Once you drive it off the lot, it starts to lose value. Can you explain that to the viewers how that works when it comes to produce? Yeah, so so the the nutrient content of the crop, you know, starts to degrade the moment it's plucked off of the plant. And that can actually be measured um, you know, um, in iterations, you know, like so so at the first time of harvest. You can measure, for example, the amount of or the percentage of vitamin C in a pepper plant. And peppers are, are known to have up to 100 percent of vitamin C. But then you measure that on you know, the third day and then also the seventh day. And so what um, I'm working with uh, UMES to do is to get them to do a comparison test between the food grown here locally with uh, food off the grocery uh, shelf you know, um, food that may have been imported, you know, both out of the country or from, you know, other states. So we can compare uh, the, the nutrient, uh, you know, content, you know, of, of vegetables and also with uh, organic and, and uh, conventionally grown uh, crops. I think I lost the audio. Hello, hello. It was us. I'm sorry. We okay, okay. Mike, I hit the wire and our mic disconnected. Thank you. I was just saying that G Mama Grows is like uh you know, uh, an encyclopedia, right? And so she knows a lot about growing and do you consider or when we say fruits and vegetables and the nutritive values, I've heard that herbs are different, like they hold their nutritive value better. Is that something that, and I also heard that people will a lot of times plant herbs alongside their Like the basil crops. and the tomatoes. I know you, you told us that, you shared that as a tip before, plant basil next to tomatoes and the basil kind of seizes the tomatoes so that when you pluck it off the vine, it tastes like it's got pepper and salt on it already. So yeah, yeah. so my question, my question there is, you know, how does this work with, 
you know, the nutritive value of fruits and vegetables, because a lot of versus herbs, like, you know, Philip Waldo Jr., he, he eats fruits and vegetables, he eats herbs. But a lot of us, Goodies Homestead, they might know the difference. And like you're saying, you have the University of Maryland uh, getting it together. But, you know, experts like you, hands in the dirt, y'all might already know some of the answers to this research. What is your what is your guesstimation or what is your knowledge so far on fruits and vegetables versus herbs? Is there a difference? You tell us. Um, that would be something um, I, I don't I, I've never um, asked that question or, or even heard it, um, you know, uh, considered like the difference in, you know, herbs um, in terms of um, I guess uh, the concentration of of nutrition, and if they if they hold better than vegetables, mm -hmm. but um, that's the research that we're trying to create, you know, and contribute ah. to. You know, um, the, well, let me ask you this I, real quick. I, mm -hmm. We have a lot of growers, hands in the dirt, right? Everybody's saying hi to him because he's like an amazing grower. Him, Rambo Green Hands, like I told you, G Mama grows triple threat firearms and defense. Good Eats Homestead, the amazing m g is just eating it and showing us the food because their stuff, they don't have to do much in Jamaica. <laughs> but do you all need um, any other contributors to this research? You know, do you need other gardeners? Because me and Philip Waldo Jr., you know, he's our favorite moderator. We would be great tasters. But are you also looking for more people to join that research at the University of Maryland? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because it's also about, um, uh, you know, educating farmers and then verifying like which uh, practices, you know, which farming practices, you know, are best for increasing that nutrition value. And uh, one thing I will say is that the, the science world is catching up to what many indigenous folks, you know, have known, you know, for thousands of years you know, that the, the soil is alive. There's plenty of, you know, living organisms, but, um, you know, the, the Eurocentric science, you know, um, that was a concept that they couldn't actually grasp until they invented the microscopes that could actually see the microorganisms, you know, and now, so we're, we're learning that, oh yeah, there's millions of things in living soil that actually um, uh, are found also in our, in our gut. And that's the basis you know, of our health, you know, yeah. so yeah, p plants grown in artificial environments um, can't produce the same uh -oh. uh, uh, nutrient <laughs> value. So no, yeah. I say that because <laughs> SDNC is saying one love to the chat and panel. What are your thoughts on the indoor garden kit? Now you just addressed this. It, he says XDMC, it costs around $700, but I think that's as far as I may get as a gardener. And what you XDMC, we know what you want that gardening kit for. <laughs> it ain't no tomatoes and no basil either. So, so here's the thing. Answer this question though. But to answer your question, <sighs> From what you just said, Thelonious, indoor gardening um, is not the same as like hands in the dirt would say. Get, if you've got some seeds, get them in the dirt. So let me ask you this. Compared to indoor gardening and dirt, dirt, does it matter if it's in a pot? Does it matter if it's in the ground? I know the soil is going to be premium. You know, uh, Philip Waldo Jr. grew up in the South, down South, right? South Carolina with his grandmother and everything. So he's seen the soil. Veggie Veggie, meanwhile, has as his icon a garden. So is there a difference between Yeah? Because well, well, just just like just like plants are like are social like humans, and they can access the network, the root structure, you know, and and scavenge things that are deep in the soil and they communicate with other plants. You know, so that's that's the ideal environment. But you know, if, you know, for people that don't have space or land, you know, anything's better than, than nothing, <laughs> you know, so if, if, if all you can do is plant an indoor, you know, grow to get some vegetables, um, you start there and then you seek, you know, uh, land, you know, so you can, you know, get things um, directly in the, in the soil. So let me ask you this, for those people that, I know you said for people that is, not, anything is better than nothing. So for those people that are planting indoors, you know, you just got some, you know, great information. Try to plant in the earth itself if you can't work with what you got and the space that you got. But for those people that well, aren't going to plant anything. Well, Rambo is giving us information. 
And we'll get that. We'll get Granville's comment in a minute. But let me ask this question. So, uh, and we'll uh, hold Erica Patrick's question as well because she's starting her planting. Go ahead. So that uh, Thelonious can ruminate and then answer after we get those questions in. <laughs> but uh, Thelonious, if people aren't going to grow or can't grow, what's the next best thing they could do to make sure they're getting the most nutritive value out of their plants so it's not being trucked to, um, to food cat or to uh, all seeds or to uh, to any of these other chain grocery stores from across the country, what can they do? What's the next best step for them? And, you know, you're an expert in this area as well. Well, you want to find a local farmer in your area. And, mm. and there are local farmers everywhere. We don't often think about them, but, you know, find a local market, you know, connect uh, with their farmer, get to know them uh, like you guys do, you know, go out, visit the farm, know what their growing practices are, you know, and if they're really growing, they can tell you about the, the various um, items that they grow uh, and, and talk about what their, their practices are. So in other words, join um, the CSA. Join the CSA. Join the you know CSA, what? Yeah. That's what Valerie said. Valerie, Valerie Singleton said, sometimes we can take advantage of community gardens. So CSA is community supported agriculture. Uh, and she says, when we don't have our own land, of course, Six Bowls is back was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Now, G Mama Grow says she uses she uses cover crops in her pot all the time because TWP yeah. Popcorn mentioned that you can still use good cover crops for IPM also, uh, and you're agreeing with all of this, right, uh, Thelonious? Yeah, yeah, because it's all about adding that organic matter. So if you can't get it in the living soil, then you want to um, things like cover cropping will help to add, you know, uh, nutrients and, and organic matter. Um, uh, to to your crops. So last thing um, is that, you know, this is Rambo's hypothesis, right? He says, because herbs are more leaf, which are all the, which is where all the benefits are. So it stores for longer, which doesn't produce fruits, but the fruit tree produces a fruit mm. using that energy. So remo removing it from it, uh, the source. Yes, from its source. Um, and how you know, Corey, you can't see and don't mess up because, no checks. Because and because uh, the spelling was messed up, and now they're gonna think you can see. Y'all, no, Corey can't I, see his eyes on work. Thelonious had already said that, and Rambo was just clarifying. And me and Rambo, you know, <laughs> we up in here, you know, I, I'm gonna claim myself a Jamaican. Juan, mind your waist, that little amazing image. Juan, <laughs> throw your guns up, uh, throw your guns up, Rambo. Rambo. <laughs> Just y'all click the like button. Let's get back to cover crops. A M A I C A. Bo, bo, bo. <laughs> so listen, GT Junior and anybody Shoot. that came in after the first five minutes, there's an amazing an amazing documentary that Thelonious is a part of. And so for you Bravo with Sheila ladies, let's chat. Yes, that documentary link is in the video description. It's wonderful. And so please y'all start there. She is laughing at you. You said Erica Patrick so had a question, right? Well, you know, Erica Patrick just made a good point that she starts a garden every year. You know, and she says it's more rewarding. And her this is just in her backyard. She's um she's got to do better, but it is so rewarding. So the whole point is start where you can, and then wherever we can't start, or you know, whatever, whatever we're doing, this is where we seek out people like Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest, because your website, you have that shop button right there on the right, and it's just about time time for you to get started with the CSA. You'll be, uh, we'll be able to order through the shop. I can get my okra roll. <laughs> and so, of course, uh, your website is a great resource. It's in the video description. And this way, y'all, you can do like Gail is telling you, get your fruits and vegetables every day, um, you know, from a reputable source. Uh, now, I know you were talking about, though, Thelonious, making sure that your crops uh, don't sit too long. Once you pick them, you want to eat them as soon as possible. So we're going to be soon as soon as possible, y'all, running the first place pony because you have two giveaways for us. Bravo with Sheila, Ladies Let's Chat has put in hashtag the home team. We're going to talk more about getting your fruits and vegetables fresh, try to get them close to the source. But 
right now. When we come back, we're all from the coffee break. We're going to talk about no, uh, the first place pony. The first place pony. We're going to come talk. <laughs> sorry, we're going to talk about you know the importance of companion planting, not just to attract predator insects and to attract pollinators, but also how you can actually season up some of your vegetables and fruits by planting them next to each other in strategic ways. We'll talk about cover cropping and we'll talk about composting. Also, you can be pesticide, herbicide, and fertilizer free. All right, so y'all know what to do. Um, here's the thing. GT Jr. is asking, what's the guest's name? Thelonious Monk, the famous jazz musician. We got him in the house today. <laughs> now, Thelonious Cook is his name. Thelonious Cook is his name, but of course, Mighty Thunder Cloud Edible Forest is what we have. Hands in the Dirt tries to get most of his fruits and vegetables from a reliable source himself. That's All what he right, said in the comments, you, you know? And before we do first place pony, just explain what companion planting is, Thelonious. So this way people can really get an idea of, okay, hands in the dirt knows, GT Jr. knows, and he's in Alaska growing. But for average folks that don't plant all the time, please explain what companion planting is. Yeah, so I guess the, the most common comp companion planting uh, uh, setup would be corn, uh, beans, and squash. And that's something that the uh, indigenous folks here taught the, the settlers when they first came. And they, they had already understood that planting those three crops together um, have uh, mutual benefits. Uh, for example, the, the beans provide a nitrogen source you know, for the other crops. Um, the corn provides a, a, a stalk, which, which the uh, beans can climb up. And then the squash has the big ear leaves, which can help to shade the ground. As, as well as, um, you know, uh, deter weeds. So you look for combinations of plants like that that do uh, grow really well um, for whatever your purpose is, whether that's attracting, uh, it, um, like, for example, tomatoes uh, and basil are a combination that um, I love to do. Um, the basil helps to uh, deter some pests. Um, they also um, add flavor to the tomatoes. So I plant them just a, a foot apart um, you know, from the uh, tomato plant. And you do notice the difference in the, in the flavor. What about um, the onions and the potatoes? Yeah, onions and potatoes, another good combination. Um, one, they also help to, for those uh, people growing in small areas, allow you to maximize your space because they grow at different uh, depths. So onions have very shallow roots where the potatoes are growing under the ground. So one, they, they don't compete for space. And then the onions repel lots of pests because they release this uh, this odor, this sulfur, you know, that Colorado potato bugs uh, don't like, for example. And that's going to be your number one pest uh, for the potatoes. So it's it's planting uh, plants together, you know, that that mutually benefit. Um, I do want to add this, Corey, because we do have hands in the dirt. This goes right in line with what he just said. Thelonious just said about planting onions. Hands in the Dirt does not eat onions. His family likes them, okay. Friends like them. And so he just dropped a video today talking about using onions to repel the pests. Exactly what you just said. Because G. Albert, he can't get anybody to weed his garden, so maybe they're supposed to be there is what he's saying. <laughs> but what you're saying is it is possible we can get all of this done. And you know, in addition to Good Eats Homestead, the everyday life of an OCD is chick. Octish. Are, yes, Optish. They are great examples of people that are using these practices that you're talking about. Look, Bravo with Sheila, Ladies Less Chat, has just saved your website. She's a vocalist. She's a motivational speaker, but she eats. All of us eat, right? So we got to do what Nikki is saying and what you're saying, companion planting. And it's not just planting vegetables next to vegetables or herbs next to vegetables. It's also those flowers. The making Because I know when we visited your farm, you have a border of certain flowers like marigolds and other flowers that help to attract pollinators and predators to eat insects that would harm the crops. So besides marigolds, what else would you recommend for border, border planting for like uh, companion crop, companion planting? Yeah, uh, zinnias is another good one. It's very uh, easy to grow, low maintenance. Um, they're beautiful flowers, so they they help to beautify the the borders of your of your uh, farm. You can always get fresh cut stems if you want to, you know, put them in your um, you know your uh, your vase uh, at your home. And the biggest thing is um, they attract those those beneficial pollinators, which are gonna uh, which are required for all of your fruiting plants. 
you know, um, and they are just attracting all those other uh, predators that will prey on, you know, some of your your pests. So, um, yeah, zinnias is a, is a popular one. Sunflowers, you know, um, another one. Um, yeah, you mentioned the marigolds. Um, nasturtiums is something that I put alongside my cu uh, cucurbits. They're also an edible flower as well. Right. You so know, your functions, yeah. Mm -hmm. multifunctions. Mm -hmm. And I noticed on your website, you have a gallery. Uh, speaking of what you just said, you know, you show cut flowers, fall crops. We can go to any of these categories, hemp, herbs, market mushrooms. And so this way, all of the information, your, your website is definitely an encyclopedia of information. We do have in here XDMC, because I mentioned hemp just for him. Mm -hmm. He says, is that how to get some of the medical ganja that tastes like coconut? They grow it next to the flavor they want. <laughs> oh, okay, ganja strawberry flavor. I'm trying this. See how they see it? <laughs> you are educating us today. <laughs> see, XDMC is one of those friends. You just can't take him just anywhere because like, it, it's you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to pull him out by his collar or at least have Karen around his wife to make sure he stays straight. So. Well, well, here's the thing: hands in the dirt, plants marigolds and zinnias every year in his garden, and this is the reason why I was asking: Do you does you, does your research with the University of Maryland Eastern Shore need more uh, gardeners in different areas? Because triple threat fire, firearms and defense, she loves zinnias. She's also a very experienced planter, gardener. Then um, black girls getting their shift together is asking for those is saying for those who have balconies, what are the best veggies and fruits for container gardening? Now, I'm going to let you answer that question. Because Rambo loves your website. He says, oh, that looks good. And G-Mama Grows, I told you she is the encyclopedia. She says the flavonoids have to already be present in the plant. So while you answer that question about, because um, you may have an answer for us about people with balconies, we just want people to put in hashtag, hashtag the home team. Yes, because Rambo has already answered that ganja is easy to change its flavor. Just plant it next to a fruit tree and some flowers. So we got that. Do you have experience, uh, Rambo? <laughs> are, are you speaking from experience or is this something you heard? What, and, and you can answer it. What had happened was right. I heard. And the good news is that Nikki is in the is in D.C. And I know that she's asking, are you located in Maryland? And your farm, one is on the eastern shore of Virginia, which connects to Maryland. So Go ahead and tell us about balcony planting. And if you want to talk about your location, that's great because, mm -hmm. you know, triple threat is like, oh, sunflowers. But go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So so if I was to go about uh, balcony uh, planting, uh, it you start with how much space that you have. You know, so if you have a three foot space or a five foot space, um, then you look at groupings, you know, groupings of plants that uh, that that you can put very close together, so that so now you're you're able to maximize the yields of what's what's possible. Um, so um, if you have let's say two or three planting boxes, then I would group them together. Um, so one grouping could be tomatoes, peppers, basil, eggplant. You know those are all crops that can be grown together in a in a you know minimal space. You could put like okra and cucumbers. You know uh, you know together. Um, you don't have so much room for plants like watermelon because that would pretty much consume the, you know, the whole thing. So um, it's all about, you know, um, it starts with the space that you have um, and then look at some of the plant groupings that can go together and then uh, start incorporating, the, you know, the things that you like. And I would try to get in a, a mix of, you know, herbs, um, you know, and, and, and vegetables um, in, in each one. <clears throat> Well, you know, Rambo Greenhands has done some research for Corey. That's how he knew where to plant those trees. And Hands in the Dirt is saying, we do have some good left-hand cigarette growers in the community, bro. I mean, in the community, too. So here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> we, do have to, uh, we do have to just, we're not even going to ask. We know the question, the answer to this question. Black girls getting their shift together are saying, no, okra. And you eat okra. We eat okra. You grow okra. It's in the documentary, Taught us how to eat it raw. You taught us how to eat it raw. But to add to your comment, I told you, Encyclopedia Brown, G Mama Grows says, I'd recommend dwarf varieties for balconies and containers. Uh, she does a lot of growing in containers and she talks about that on her channel as well. So, so, uh, and we do appreciate you, Gail. If you're not feeling well, girl, take a load off, take a break because we got our favorite moderator, Philip Waldo Jr. We've got XDMC hanging out and uh, we've got everything in the description, right? So 
So we gotta get these horses off and running because uh, Thelonious has a lot of ground to cover, no pun intended. A lot of ground to cover when it talks about, we kind of hit the pesticide free campaign plan, but he's got, also got to talk about cover crops and composting as a way to fertilize and, and enrich the nutrients in the soil that you're growing in. Well, you know, uh, speaking of nutrients, Rambo plants okra with sweet potatoes. They work together. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thanks. See, and uh, Thelonious is nodding. Do you agree with that, Master Grower? <laughs> yeah, sweet potatoes. Watermelon is another place that I love to, because because watermelons need space for their vines to grow, and um, they also need six feet in between each other. So the only you have to look for things that you can squeeze in between. Okra is a plant that that's perfect for that. Ah, got it. Okay. And Black Girls Getting Their Shift Together is going to try the eggplant. She does. She didn't know that could be an option. So thank you for your wealth of information today, Thelonious. So Thelonious, the way we're going to do this first place pony drawing is I'm going to make a horse race announcement. When I say bring, uh -huh. when I make the gates, when I make the gate sound, sound bring, <laughs> you're going to say, and they're off. Okay. All right. All right, so y'all, it's not rigged. Y'all see we have a lot of entries in there. Let's do it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another run of the blind guy, his wife, their life live. First place pony derby. All the jockeys are mounted and ready to ride. Thelonious, what will all these ladies say when they find that you're single and you're going to take your shirt off in the summer? Bring! <laughs> and they're off. <laughs> Woo! Let's see. We got Bravo with Sheila. Ladies, let's chat. Hands in the dirt. Nick Anthony, G. Albert, G. Valerie Singleton, TWP Popcorn, uh, GT Junior Girls of Alaska, G. Mama Girls, TWP Popcorn, Rainbow Green Hands, Valerie Singleton! Hey, Valerie Singleton <laughs> came riding in Woo! on a Shetland pony and mm. still won the race. Mm, mm, mm. So, we got Valerie. Wait, wait. XDMC wants to know what do you win for the first place pony other than bragging rights? Do we have more than one win today? We got more than one win to no, we got one win at the end of the show. Tomorrow we're gonna have more than one win when Love and Live show comes on. So we have two giveaways tomorrow. So wait, today Valerie Singleton just wins bragging rights. She wins bragging rights, and Thelonious said he'll take a picture of his chest and send it to you. Woo, let me tell y'all another way to see Thelonious with his shirt off is to head over to the to the uh, to his farm. Look at the documentary. They have the description and the, the location. Go to his website, Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest. Gail has been dropping that. And this way, while everybody congratulate, uh, congratulates Valerie Singleton, think about this. Not for the guys, because hands in the dirt, Rambo, y'all don't care about this. But Nikki, <laughs> girl, the everyday life of an OCD is chick. This is what you do. You're in D.C. You're not too far away. Go there April 14th through the 16th. If not, just go on the 15th. Thelonious will be shirtless. He'll be working hard, <laughs> filling the soil. He'll be sweating. Girl, it's going to be I'm a, a good time, I'm a, G-Mama Grove. I'm going to be shirtless too, y'all. I'm, I'm going to be shirtless too. This is daytime show. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> so look. <laughs> Valerie Singleton is saying, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> But Valerie, you know what, guys? Ms. Ms. Valerie, girl, take that head off, sister. Get on over there. So April 15th. We're going to show the flyer because, look, Nikki says, I hear y'all. And uh, GT Jr. Is, is, is congratulating them. You don't even have to look up the documentary. It's in the video description. We're going to drop the link here and into again, the this, chat. That documentary proves just how much of a master agriculturalist Thelonious is because you don't just get international <laughs> film crews coming to your farm if you're not doing something right so like definitely check that documentary out and Thelonious if you if you if you're in the area come to Thelonious's farm on the eastern shore we'll be there on April 15th but come April 14th 15th 16th it's a whole festival called the she festival sand coat for healing experience there'll be uh the, the chances for you to make hemp creek there'll be chances for you to engage in morning yoga and stretches you can stay on the land if you're in the camping you can get a local Airbnb if you want to do that also there'll be concerts there'll be food vendors there'll even be some let's say other activities that maybe Rambo is an expert in. Well, we do, are, we gonna, are there going to be any real giveaways? Because XDM XDMC says, bragging rights, I can do that on my own. Y'all better get some real giveaways up in here. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Nikki likes some young and tender, so I think she'll be there. Well, she says that's how she likes the vegetables, but G Mama Grows is, is happy. You know, you know Valerie, she, I got you. We got the flyer right here. You know uh, Nikki's husband's still in preschool. Do you know what? What do you mean still in preschool? Because she said she likes them young and tender. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He just got potty trained last year. Here week. is the flyer, and uh, Black Girls Getting Their Shift Together wants to know if you know any single farmers in Atlanta. Ooh, la, la. And Thelonious look at Rambo travels. saying, ladies, come on down with them single dollars. You, uh, Thelonious <laughs> takes cards, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Here's a question for you before we go to our coffee break. Can you have the stripper tip? <laughs> <laughs> when you marry different plants together, does it affect the taste? I think you kind of touched With on the that basil already. And tomato, yes. You're saying it's it's good. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and and I have people tell me that the cucumbers uh, have like sort of a watermelon flavor. And that th that's another combination that I plant uh, close together. <clears throat> nice, nice. Okay, so y'all know where to go. Definitely, it's in the description. But visit Mighty Thundercloud, Thundercloud Edible Forest online. So the links are there in the caption. They're everywhere. And with this flyer, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that way nobody misses anything. It is put on by Divine Creations too. She was on our uh, show just a couple of weeks ago, Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest. Uh, and of course, you can see right here all the different things that will be there. Guided meditation, sunrise yoga, spring planting ritual, natural building demonstration. We will be working with the hemp creek there. Storytelling, drummers and dancers. I think y'all kind of feel like y'all know Autumn Palm will be there, right? Our dance theater and everything. Fashion show, live performances and more. And this is April 14th through the 16th in Bird's Nest, Virginia. That video link in the description does tell you that his farm is in uh, Bird's Nest, Virginia, so which is on the eastern shore. Look at the, Nikki. She says, married people affect one another. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's just get on to the coffee break. Thelonious. That's, that's why I taste like a straight up lemon look, right look, now. Thelonious, we're going to go to the coffee break. So we'll see you pretty soon, okay? All right. All right, where is he going, Corey? To the green room? Going to the green room so that he can go ahead and put the baby oil on for the shirtless part. And then he's going to also enjoy some computer chips and some virtual vino and some and uh, some software salsa. <laughs> we'll see you soon. All right, Thelonious. All right. <laughs> Guys, this broadcast is powered by StreamYard and by viewer support by members like you. Oh. If you want to be down with the Blind Guy's Wife the Life home team, first, like, share, subscribe. But also make sure that you go to blindguyhiswife.com and Click the green coffee cup so she can say, what you doing? I can say, girl, you know what I'm doing. I'm fitting to do it like the amazing M&G and Rambo Greenhouse. I'm going to wind my waist a little and stir it like coffee. Click a, click a, click a, click a, bop, bop, bop. Mm, you going to do all of that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, y'all, you know what to do. Head on over to blindguyhiswife.com, scrolling right there at the bottom of the screen. And, of course, when you get there, all you have to do is scroll down to where it says join the home team. Click the green coffee cup. Corey has been blind over 25 years. Philip Waldo Jr. You mentioned earlier that you were reading the uh, comments. Mm -hmm. No, he, uh, he we ain't messing up no checks. So we always put in 25 as an example of how many coffees you can buy. And you can join, say something nice, leave your name, and you can join JBWR, AJ is Road Tripping, and all the other folks, Ruby Grandison, that have bought coffees. But... There are some people that have chosen to sponsor just by clicking, uh, not doing the clankety clankety clank because you know G Mama Bros mm -hmm. likes that part. But uh, they have chosen to sponsor. I do want to answer this question real quick. Valerie Singleton asks, "Where is Bird's Nest in relation to Newport News?" It's about an hour and a half. All I right. would say it's about an hour and a half because we are in the Virginia Beach region as well, and so Newport News is a little further out. Uh, hour and a half. It might be an hour and 45 minutes, actually. Um, but yes, 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 yes. So, yeah. And, and just so you know, Nikki says, Corey Laquita ain't that bad. Because when you were saying you, uh, I can see and hear you, Corey, you're <laughs> saying evil. Ah, let's get on to the people that have chosen to sponsor us. This broadcast is brought to you in part by promotional considerations paid for by the following unmuted sponsors. Thank you to the sponsors. We appreciate you. Supreme sponsors, David and Christine Brooks. Supreme sponsor, Dr. Linda Bailey Hayden of Elizabeth City State University. Wishlist sponsor, JBWR. Check out his YouTube channel. Supreme sponsor, People's Pharmacy. Check out their YouTube channel. Supreme sponsor, Jamestown Settlement. Supreme sponsor, Mount Zion, AME Church. Supreme sponsor, AJ's Road Trip. Supreme sponsor, JBWR. 
You or your company can become a sponsor. Visit blindguyhiswife.com. All right, y'all. All right. Well, guys, we want to thank all of our sponsors who have been, made their business to make their business part of our business. Like Blind Jamie Guy, W R. His wife dot Blind Guy's wife, their life. And again, if you want to get your day rolling like we're doing, you can get coffee by also going to rolljava.com and you can order your own uh, order our special premium blends of coffee that can be delivered right to your door. But we got to get Thelonious back in here. You know, thank Hold you for on. joining us. Coconut me. oil infused with hemp to make you know what mm, make the money going high i like that rambo so make put that into your introduction when thelonious comes back in come on Corey, you will, you will have coconut infused with hemp to make the money going high oh from when thelonious the shirt off okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> so go ahead here we go do the introduction for thelonious with mighty thundercloud edible forest and include that comment Thank you for joining us on this episode of A Blind Guy. His wife. Their Life Live. Join us every Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hump day the bang bang Friday. And we are here with you to introduce you to fabulous guests and wonderful resources to help you with your nutritional health. Business wealth. And today is no exception to the rules. We have a fabulous agricultural expert in the building. Today's special guest has a very appropriate name, Thelonious, because just like the great jazz musician, he's making music out in the garden, creating a better planet, better produce to help people help create better people. This agriculturalist is one that can make George Washington Carver stand up in the heavens and sing his praises to the good Lord. This brother, Thelonious is so bad, that he was transported back into time, into the Garden of Eden to help them grow all of those wonderful fruits and vegetables that helped Adam and Eve stay alive. This brother is probably going to be the net, the first brother on Mars to actually show people how to grow okra on that planet. This brother is such an amazing grower that when Batman, Batman has to face off with poison ivy, he calls on Thelonious Cook. And not to mention for the ladies, give him some baby oil and then get your coconut water infused with him because he's going to make it rain when he takes his shirt off to reveal his, his body armor. That is not the Black Panther suit. That's just his flesh. It's time for today's special guest. He's the incredible Hulk of horticulture. It is the Lonious Cool. Welcome, welcome. Mighty Thunderbird. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Your intro and everybody's response. <laughs> I don't even know what I see. It. I, I, as soon as I see him, I forget him. <laughs> the, the, the Mars one, I'll, I'll take that sound bite. I don't know about the coconut <laughs> oil though. But. I know. You know what? We we're gonna we're gonna clip it for you. Y'all know I'm an actor and actress. Yes, girl. Thank you so much. Black girls getting their shit together. But when when he was the, describing Thelonious, you know, a lot of it was real because I've seen him in person and uh, he he is a handsome guy. Y'all see him on the screen, but he does have the muscle behind it. He puts in the work because and- he's not just he's not going out there with a tractor and flower. He's actually going out there with a a, a, pan, a mower. And he actually mows his uh his ground his planting grounds to prepare it for you planting. Know what? And he's also going to talk about cover cropping and composting. But we're going to take some questions for you as well. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Take advantage of this free game that Thelonious is giving. Well, I do have I do have free game from Hands in the Dirt, and this is thank you so much for agreeing. Uh, Stacy says, Corey, it's always the beautiful ones that make you pull your hair out. You're in good hands, and GT Junior agrees. It's so true, Stacy. So Stacy and GT Junior, this makeup Stacey is and working. Stacy and GT Junior, Stacy and GT Junior. Look, grounded points. We're not giving out grounded points today. Quit it. Look, <laughs> ask the questions, y'all. Ask the questions. But while they ask, we do want to hear from you a little bit about. Oh, well, wait. You first. You all put in hashtag uh, edible forest. Just put in hashtag edible forest so that you can win uh the, the next giveaway. And what and what hair do I have to pull out? It's gone. So pesticide free plants. Tell us a little bit more. We talked about that already with the companion plants. Mm-hmm. So now we're gonna talk about the cover cropping for fertilizer because fertilizer is a big problem. Like the pesticides and herbicides, the glyphosates, all those things can lead to cancer, it can lead to uh um 
different issues, chronic issues, diabetes. So we want to hear about so, composting. So and about I think composting. black girls getting their shift together is asking about that. She yeah. puts eggshells in her soil for container gardening. Mm -hmm. So, we want so talk what are your thoughts about yeah, that? Let's talk about composting and, for, and, and other options for fertilizer. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I, I, you, you, you cut out a, a, a bit, but um, but yeah, highly recommend uh, um, composting and cover cropping. Those are uh, the two. Well, that's that's all I use for my nutrient management. Um, and cover cropping, I assume, is is probably less familiar with uh, to most people. But uh, what it is, it's it's a practice of uh, essentially planting your your weeds um, because uh, if you don't cover the ground with something, nature will find things that you know that will grow in that space. And so if you're preparing a space for spring planting, the best thing is to is to identify a, a cover crop, you know, to consume that space where weeds would otherwise grow. And then they're also going to add that that uh, those other benefits that you would like in terms of uh, organic matter, because, um, well, let me, let me give you an example. Um, uh, in terms of winter cr cover crops, um, I like to use crimson clover, which um you know, it'll produce a nice thick biomass in the spring. You get these beautiful crimson clover flowers. So it's also good to produce um, um, clover honey. But then mm. in the springtime, once you mow down that clover, that becomes um, organic matter that then will decompose into the soil and feed all of those microorganisms that are really going to be uh, beneficial to um, the, the nutrients uh, for your plants. And when you plant, you don't, you, like we said, you don't plow, but you, but you do have a different technique that you use. You actually, can you describe what you're doing? Because you don't plow and plant. You kind of mow and, and, and toss seeds and let them do their thing the way they're going to do them. So how does that work on your farm? What are you actually doing? What's your technique? Yeah, so my technique I've been developing, you know, since, uh, since 2015, you know, as I started, and mainly out of necessity because I didn't have the resources to buy the, you know, the big fancy tractors. And I also started to learn that, you know, a lot of the, the challenges I was having on my farm, like like the compacted soil was due to that heavy machinery, you know, going back and forth over the soil. And I also learned that when you plow the, the soil, you're breaking up that that soil structure, you know, um, uh, which which you want to keep intact. Um, and you're also anytime you turn over the soil you're you're um, basically flipping those dormant weed seeds that were that were you know in the bottom of the soil some can live up to 40 years and you're putting that on top so you're you're actually you know creating more work for yourself so i started to adapt um uh they call it no-till practices and so it's it's challenging you know um without you know um let's say plant drills and, and stuff like that to do no-till so the, the, the techniques that I use uh, mainly, um, I have a flail mower and it's a, it's a walk behind. So it's not heavy, like a big tractor mm. um, that will allow me to terminate the, the cover crop. You know, some cover crops will winter kill, meaning the a hard frost will kill it and that will start the decomposition uh, process. But um, if I have to you know term it, terminate it by mowing, I'll mow it about a month out. So right now I'm, I'm I'm starting to mow all of my fields that had a winter cover crop in. And then I have these uh, these tarps, which I can pull that tarp over top. It's it's called a silage tarp. And that tarp will help to, uh, you know, break down that, that cover crop even more. Uh, and it will also force any other weed seeds that are on the surface to germinate. But then the absence of light will kill that. So then when you pull that tarp back, you know, uh, right before you're ready to plant, you know, you have that sort of, it's not completely bare, but it still has some some crop residue, which will continue to decompose in the soil. But you have lots of lots of organic matter uh, as now, well. Now, black girls getting their shift together, that's a great way, to, great advice for people looking to increase the nutrient value of their soil. But black girls getting their shift together had a question about putting eggshells as part of her compost. What do you think, what do you recommend for- So wait, we do have other people adding like how they- kind of uh, get their things started. And y'all, this documentary link, it is in the description. I've just added it to the live chat. But I know Rambo, when you mentioned mowing, Corey, he said that's what he forgot to do this year because he does no-till gardening. Now he has to pull a lot of weeds. Uh, yeah, hands right. In the Rambo's dirt. out there with his Uzi. 
<laughs> God, anyway, ready for growing mine. Hands in the dirt says, <laughs> I have never cover cropped, but I do use composted manure and compost from my compost bins. I've also used alfalfa pellets. So there's a lot of different things. And G Mama Grows, y'all know, Encyclopedia Brown, she says, G Mama Knows. G Mama Knows says, I use the green manure outside for winter crop of her containers because she does a lot of container cropping. And then you were going to ask about the eggshells because a right. lot of people use those because they are organic material. Like, you know, Nikki, the everyday life of No CD is chick earlier. She said that definitely she uses kitchen scraps. She, you know, just buries the kitchen scraps. And so anything that you want to add to any of that, Thelonious, because we're about to do the final giveaway. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say a, a lot of things we use every day, like tea bags, uh, you know, coffee grounds, um, you know, uh, fruit peelings, any plant-based materials, um, eggshells, and also grass clippings. So if you just, if you have a lawn and you're mowing a lawn and it has a bag, that's also a perfect ingredient, you know, to your, to your compost. Um, <clears throat> and somebody mentioned alfalfa, fill, uh, alfalfa meal. I will second that. Um, I use that as a compost tea. And you can get those from any like weed and feed or, or feed, feed and seed store that, that has a uh, horse uh, food, and you just mix that into water and that will decompose. That's something that you can spray um, on your plants as a as a foliar spray. <clears throat> now, what about, here's one that I learned. Oh, we got to do the giveaway. Don't give them all the information because they're trying to make this a two-hour show. Somebody what, already said it. <laughs> what about, I've learned recently that in ci big cities, and we're not in big city, but in city areas like ours, the sewage plants treat uh, waste and you can buy bags of uh, uh, fertilizer. I don't, I don't want what, that. what did you think about that? I, I, I know. I just want to do. I just want to use coffee grounds, like hands in the dirt said, and from Starbucks <laughs> they get that to you for free. I don't want it from the plant. Go ahead, Thelonious. You answer that question though. You said from a power plant, from no, from a, uh, uh, a waste management plant, for the sewage plant. Hmm. Shouldn't we go well, to Starbucks yeah, to see just, it? <laughs> I'm just asking because <laughs> right, right, right. It's out there, and people might find us. Oh, you know, I'll do this. Well, there, there's lots of places that you can you can partner with, like mom and pop stores or local uh, coffee shops would be happy to you know uh, you know to give some of their things to help supplement uh, you know your compost. You know, depending on how you know how big of a scale that you need. Um, you know, but but yeah, just starting with your your food scraps and then and then looking around any any places that you go and eat. Um, you know, is a, is a good place to visit. <clears throat> Got it. Now, speaking of good places to visit, Gail at Night has dropped your Instagram because whenever your CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, is open again and ready for the season, you always update Instagram. So y'all will know that you're there because it says Mighty Thundercloud, Edible Forest. And of course, all the different uh, pictures are here, video clips, and this is where he's most active. There he is, y'all, getting an award. Thelonious has been traveling all this week. He's been doing so many things. And as you all know, we shared the flyer with you about the festival, upcoming festival, April 15th, 2023, right there. It's 14th through 16th, but the 15th, if you're there, that's the day that you really want to see Thelonious with his shirt off. So, um, <laughs> just a G Mama Grow. <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. G Mama Grow says, "Nah, I don't want no human waste." I know. Yeah, I, that's what I said when I heard. It. I said, "Well, first you got treated with some chemicals." So you that's know, what that's Rambo not said. Good. Oh, you said human waste. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I didn't. I didn't catch. That's what you said earlier. Human waste. Yeah, okay. they they treat it with chemicals in order to, I guess, get rid of E. coli and all that stuff. So I wouldn't want it for those reasons. But that's then it's like, yeah. nah. Go ahead, the that, that, I, I would say that that's the number one source of. Uh, outbreaks and contamination mm -hmm. is is coming from like human fecal matter, so it's it's not something you want to, you know, um, you know, um, do like haphazardly. Like um, even people that have composting toilets, you know, there's there's a length of time, you know, bef uh, for that for that waste to break down before you can use it on on anything that's going to be, uh, exactly. especially exactly. things that are eaten raw, right, um, right, uh, lettuce, yeah. leafy lettuce greens and stuff like that. I would avoid. And that's why I brought that up because people will see those things online and think, oh, this is a good idea, but no, nah, it's not really. So what are you laughing at? G Mama Grow, G Mama knows how my Oreo unicorn poop is the bomb, though. <laughs> 
you know what? Oh, the ice cream. Yeah, man. They got, look, unicorn poop is different. Let, let's get back to the topic here. So we got to do the final giveaway. So, Thelonious, I'm going to say three, two, one. And what you're going to do is you're going to say Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest. Is there anything you wanted to say, though, before we continue? Is there anything that we missed that you want people to know? Let us know right now. Yeah, just um, you pointed them to the Instagram page. Um, that's where I'm most uh, active. I'll get to updating that that website soon. But if you want to stay up to date about the upcoming event, um, as well as how to sign up for the CSA, uh, definitely uh, visit the IG. Yeah, and I, I will say when we get our CSA, a lot of times it's harvested that day, which, uh, you know, like you're saying, it, it really makes a difference to have your fruit as fresh as possible. Uh, you know, hands in the dirt. He's a he's a professional. He says his compost tea is funky, but his plants love it. And I know you were talking about making compost tea as well. Now, no okra mentions that he had a great a watermelon honeydew orange fruit salad for breakfast today. Mm -hmm. He's getting in his fruits and vegetables every day. We do have a worksheet on that. Gail has dropped the link there. So let's do this final giveaway to see what people are going to get from you before we go into our plant-based treats. So today you're gonna, whoever wins this giveaway gets to name a plant that's gonna be planted as part of the spring planting ceremony on April 15th during the weekend long She Festival, Sankofa Healing Experience, mm. April 14th through the 16th. Uh oh, who if you if you didn't put in the hashtag edible forest, do it now because I only have a few entries. And so y'all get it in there. Um, anything else, Corey or Thelonious? Thelonious mainly. Right. Right. So because Valerie wants to win again. Thelonious, anything else from you? <laughs> yeah, and, and the winner can they can choose whether that's a shade tree, uh, we'll say a fruit tree or or maybe a nut tree. Um, and I'll add I'll add herb, herbs there um, because I'll I will be planting some some herbs this spring. So they can choose and then we'll dedicate that out there on the uh, at the festival. Oh, that's okay. so wonderful. So that, that's good to know. Um, I think we're ready because y'all, if you have not put in edible forest, hashtag edible forest, don't worry. We have some people that have, and you know, Valerie is trying to win again. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to say three, two, one. And uh, Thelonious, you're going to say mighty thundercloud edible forest. Here we go. Three, two, one. Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest. All right. We got G Mama Grows and Everyday Life of an OCDS Chick. Hands in the Dirt, Valerie Singleton, G Mama Grows, uh, Rambo Green Hands, No Okra, G Mama Grows, Rambo Green Hands, the Everyday Life of an OCDS Chick. Rambo! Hey, <laughs> the Jamaican over there in the UK. Wow. You get to name a plant. You get to pick the type of plant it is. It's a fruit tree, shade tree, a nut tree. And you also, that will be dedicated and planted on the spring planting ceremony day of April 15th on the Bird's Nest, Virginia, on the Eastern Shore. Absolutely. <coughs> you all. So you this... haven't, uh, I know, I already know what he's going to say. Well, who's going to say? Rambo. He goes, name the tree Jackfruit. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's his, that's his horse's name in the uh, first place pony. So everybody is happy for uh for Rambo. And don't worry if you forgot triple threat firearms and defense. Just keep growing. That's the main thing. G Mama grows and G Mama knows is congratulating him. <laughs> so Long we end. got the final question for you because let me let me just make it make this clear to everyone. Rambo Green Hands is already saying jackfruit, but <laughs> <laughs> Thelonious, you eat everything, right? You don't just eat fruits and vegetables and grains and nuts and seeds. You also eat meat and everything uh, because Rambo is saying, Corey, you already know. <laughs> and we also know your dietary habits. You eat more of what you grow. What you grow. But my point is you eat everything, chicken, fish. Uh, is there anything that you don't eat? Um, well, I don't get into all of the parts of the pig. <laughs> yeah, so you're like Corey. I, I used to eat chitlins. You don't eat chitlins, but no, you no. eat bacon and ham and stuff. I do. In, yeah, in moderation, eat, yes. Yep. In moderation, because I would eat hog maws. I would eat chick. I would eat any anything part of the pig. That, that anything ears, that stink like and draw flies is not meant to be eaten. <laughs> so either way, we do have to ask you this question. Thelonious Cook, what fruits and vegetables have you eaten today or do you plan to eat today? Fruits and vegetables today? Um, actually, I haven't. Uh, I haven't even eaten today. <laughs> but I, I got up early and jumped right online uh, to get ready for this. So um, what will I eat today? Um, 
That's a good question. Let me think on that. <clears throat> All right. Okay. He's got to go look out the window and see what's growing right now. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? That that definitely gets us into our plant-based treat segment for today. Thank you so much, Thelonious, for gracing us. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you hang out in the green room for just a moment so we can say thank you once we're done. Anything else you want to say, Corey? No, nope, that's it. You said it. All right. We'll see you soon. All right, Thelonious? All right. All right. All right. Y'all y'all see that? We're not fruit hoodlums. We're not vigilantes. We're not plate popo, mealtime marines, or supper time security guards. As Wally says, we are plate advisors, helping you to get your faves, fruits, and vegetables every spread. So it's time for today's plant-based treat by Chef Laquita Marie. Now, this is a food that some of you mentioned, the sweet potato. So I say get them in however you need to get them in. In this case, it's for breakfast. So let's go ahead and give you, wait, wow, the host got the guest starving. Y'all didn't feed it, brother. Thanks a lot, XDMC. PMC, I knew it, it wasn't us. It wasn't us. <laughs> oh, good. And Rainbow is going to connect with him online right now. And y'all can connect with us on LinkedIn, but right now we've got a delicious breakfast that y'all can make and you won't feel like we're just giving you fruits and vegetables every spread. Here we go. Sweet potato breakfast pie. Cut and cook the potatoes. You can boil or bake them. Sweet potatoes are an excellent source of beta carotene, which is a powerful antioxidant. These help lower the risk of cancers like prostate and lung cancer. The cashews will make it uh, very creamy. Cashews contain healthy fats that help lower bad cholesterol to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and heart attack. I'm going to add flour. Also add in some salt. I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon contains antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal properties to relieve digestive discomfort with its prebiotic properties. A tablespoon of sugar. Blend it together so that we have these coarse crumbles. So we've got these coarse crumbles that you can press together. Next, you just add a little ice water. Add ice water until the dough forms. Two tablespoons of sugar, tablespoon of syrup, a teaspoon of ginger, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, Add a couple of tablespoons of our flax egg, which is just simply flax seeds and water. Studies show that eating flax seeds every day can lower the levels of bad cholesterol and it's a great source of fiber to promote regularity. We'll add a little bit of milk, about a third of a cup, some walnuts, pecans, and I also took Brazil nuts. Press out the dough into these cups. I did bake the dough for about 10 minutes. Bake on 375 degrees. I like the crust. It was nice and crispy. I like the nuts and the filling, and uh, I also like the filling because it was sweet. All right, y'all. Right. And you know what? This is where we have to say goodbye. We're in overtime, and our guest not only grows okra, but he eats it raw. Absolutely. And so, yes, he has some of the best okra. Y'all make sure you subscribe to Ramble Green Hands. He is going, he just won the second giveaway. So he's going to be naming the type of plant that grows uh, at the She Festival on April 15th. Now, what if he, what if he, he plants the apple tree and he calling it jackfruit? He's going to have everybody confused. <laughs> well, you, I know. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, triple Threat Firearms, Tarsha is saying that looks delicious. So is Nikki saying that. And Rambo. I uh, saying that measurements, measurements. I think I actually used measurements that day. Um, Hands in the dirt says it looks delicious, along with G Mama Grow saying it's nice. That's what I'm talking about. And Rambo, I love my okra raw. <laughs> How do we say goodbye today, Corey? Hey guys, tune in tomorrow. We got the Love and Live show dropping in live, talking about how they're using. YouTube. I got to dance because they always singing. They were just talking about how Body they roll. use YouTube to promote their products and make money doing it. And, and they have food products, y'all. Hot sauce, teas, barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce. You name it, they're going to be talking about their book publications, everything. But thank you for joining us on this episode of The Blind Guy. His wife. Their Life Live. Join us every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 11, 15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to say goodbye the same way Thelonious Cook is going to say Deuces, goodbye. Yeah. To all is that how we're going to say it? To all the ladies. And they come running after him when he's out there uh, no-tilling his ground. Thelonious is going to look at y'all and say, deuces. Thank <laughs> you.